what you have been taught. So let's go back and look. And we, what we see here, ladies and gentlemen, is we have an inscribed angle. At this inscribed angle, all right, what I want you guys to understand, this is an inscribed angle. It has two endpoints and it has a vertex, correct? Now remember, when we're trying to find the measure of the arcs, they're asking us, what is the measure of my arc Wx? So I need to figure out this arc, correct? So I don't have this angle here. Only thing I have is 57. Now the only thing we have learned about 57 is if I project that over, I can now say that based on what I learned about inscribed angles, that from here to here is now going to be 120. It's going to be 114 degrees. Why is that? Remember, when you guys have a central angle, if I said this is 45 degrees, this is 40, the measure of your arc is 45 degrees, right? Or let's just do 50, make it simple for you. If I say that's 50 degrees, the arc is 50 degrees. But if I did this, which is now an inscribed angle, that's 25 degrees, correct? So if that's 57 degrees, I can now say that the measurement from the arc is 114 degrees. Now, we notice that the line x to y is the diameter. That means it's going to cut the circle in half, meaning from here to here is 180 degrees. Now, yes, 57 times 2. 50 times 50 is 100. 7 times 2 would be 14. So it's 114. Make sense? Just 57 times 2. Um, so, Because remember, it's not a central angle. If it was a central angle, then that would be 57. But it's not a central angle. It's an inscribed angle. So you have to double it. Um, so now we have all the measurements of the sides except for one. And remember, the distance all the way around a circle is 360. So to find Wx, all I simply need to do is do 360 minus 180 minus 114. So therefore, Wx is going to equal 66 degrees. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any further questions on that? No? OK. Good.